Welcome to this online training on developing a cross-border cooperation project. As presented in our previous video on problem analysis, there are seven key steps in preparing a good project. Let's now take a look at the second step, the stakeholder analysis. When you have a clear overview of the cross-border problem, it is important to analyze further who is affected by this problem, either directly or indirectly, or who has an interest in it. Most likely, you're not the only one who's interested in it. These people or organizations are called the stakeholders. Stakeholders have different concerns, capacities and interests, sometimes even conflicting. And these need to be understood and recognized early on in the process of project development. Do not assume that you already know the positions of the various stakeholders, but consult them and analyze what kind of impact this problem has on the various stakeholders. Some stakeholders will benefit directly from the results of your project. Others will become the target groups of your activities. The capacity and motivation of these stakeholders to contribute to positive change will determine who you will involve in your activities. Let's now see how our project partners, Anna, Boris and Carla, carry out this stakeholder analysis. So, who is affected by the problems? First of all, the inhabitants of our regions. They want to have clean water bodies, be able to swim without algae, and enjoy the diversity of plants and fish. Then there are the farmers, of course. Perhaps this is a wider group, also including fishermen? Fishermen also have a stake, of course. But think carefully which stakeholders you combine into one group. They may not have the same interests. Yes, of course. Fishermen probably want fewer nutrients in runoff, while farmers are often prone to use more. Let's take fishermen separately, then. Also property owners on the shores of the water bodies. But what about yourselves? What wider groups do you represent? Well, the authorities, in a wider sense, those dealing with agriculture, utilities, the environment and law enforcement, also water companies, I guess. And the environmentalists, including nature lovers, researchers. OK, let's see who is affected by which problem. Property owners, authorities. Farmers, authorities. Environmentalists. Farmers, farmers, property owners, authorities. Authorities, authorities. Inhabitants, inhabitants, fishermen, inhabitants. Let's put these in a matrix. Try to imagine how the stakeholders will be affected by these problems. OK, let's start with the farmers. They appear at the heart of our problem. I think we should talk to them as soon as possible in order to find out more about their fertilizer practices. Let's visit some of them and ask how they determine the amount of fertilizer to be used. I can go first. This, however, does not go quite according to plan. Anna visits a large farm at the outskirts of Alavir. Good morning. Impressive farm you have here. Thank you. What can I do for you? Well, as I explained on the phone, we are preparing this project to improve water quality in our region. And we are testing a few ideas with potential stakeholders. OK, so what has that got to do with me? Well, um, there are these studies by the Alavir University concluding that an excess use of fertiliser is leading to reduced levels of oxygen in our water bodies. Are you suggesting that I don't know how much fertiliser I should use? I've been a farmer for 32 years and my father before me. Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, um, I don't know you and it's just a hypothesis. Um... And a wrong one too. Anna uses her best diplomatic skills, but the damage is done. Disappointed, she goes back to the next meeting with Boris and Carla. That was a disaster. We'll never be able to get the farmers on board like this. Which means this project will never work. Hey, don't worry. All is not lost. Let's see if we can come up with other ways to approach the farmers. Perhaps we should try to put ourselves in their shoes. 
Yeah, let's focus on what could be in it for them. We could talk about new technology that helps them economise on fertiliser, and also that we are writing a project that will co-fund this. And so they make a second attempt, this time starting from the Association of Farmers. Boris goes there with his colleague from the Economic Development Department of the Regional Council. This has more success. The chairman of the association tells them how farmers determine the amounts of fertilizer to be used. Boris comes back enthusiastically. I think I know the reason behind the farmers' behavior. They don't know the concentration of nutrients on their land and fear underfertilization with lower production as a result. So, perhaps we could just focus on their inability to estimate the need for more fertilizer. This way, we could engage them better into the project because I really think we need them. I'm sure they also don't like wasting money on unnecessary fertiliser. This means they may be motivated to participate if they can economise on fertiliser use. They can contribute with their detailed knowledge of the local area. So what can we do to raise their interest? We will need some kind of demonstration of the economic benefits of measuring the amount of fertiliser needed. Our partners use the same approach for a few other stakeholders, such as lakeside property owners. This way, they fill the whole matrix. Of course, this has to be done on the basis of what these stakeholder groups themselves say. Therefore, Anna, Boris and Carla identify and contact representative organisations for each of these stakeholder groups and ask them for input into the stakeholder matrix. From this point onwards, they agree to consult with these organisations while designing their project. Have a look at the file here for some more details on the stakeholder matrix. Our partners now have a good understanding of who the stakeholders are for their problem and how they might be involved in solving it. With the stakeholder matrix in hand, they can move on to the next step of project development. Let's now watch the next video on objective analysis. Thank you.